And um, yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing your ideas as well. So I want to share, and before I let you know that I am a coming at you from a very humble, as, as was mentioned, standpoint. I'm not an expert and I'm still learning. I look forward to learning any tips that you might have as well. But just wanted to share some of what we have. So let's get started. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So today I want to, we would like to talk about uh, what, uh, what is a blog, right? And we will take some time looking into how do we start a blog? And we will take some time figuring how we can use blogs to engage our students through distance learning right now. So the, the thing I want to talk, the thing we can talk about, uh, the reason we're talking about blogs today is because blogs are free and they're pretty basic and they're pretty straightforward when it comes to putting them together. I am sure that anybody who got to here today can figure out how to build a blog. So I'm confident that we can all do it. So does anybody have any questions so far? No questions? Okay. So first things first, what is a blog? Now we all know probably that a blog is similar to a website. It's a combination of words of web and log. It features like a diary type commentary. It's different than a web page in that it is constantly changing. Now blogs come in a lot of different varieties. If you've looked at them, these on the right, these are a lot of what we see as far as what kind of blogs there are, from finance blogs to business blogs to health blogs and the like. Curious, what are what are does it, what are some of the blogs people like to to read? Anybody? Everybody's on mute. And feel free to unmute yourself to respond. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of different blogs that we all like to read. I'd love to hear if you have to share. But I used to I used to like to read um, "You Grow Girl," which was a gardening blog. But that was I don't read them so much anymore. Good. I do a lot I, of I, recipe ones. I seem to find ones with recipes. Perfect. Yep. That's very similar to to myself. When I oops, sorry. When I look at blogs. I've used, spent most of the time, oh, can I go back? I don't know if I can go back. I spent most of my time in the one, uh, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> I spent most of my time looking, the blogs that I've written in the past, and when I, I what, wrote about travel experiences, I looked into, when I was doing triathlon, I was doing a triathlon training type of diary. So like we said, help, and, and outdoor stuff and all things that are useful to learn. So, oh, well, let's go to the next one, sorry. So as I was saying, a blog is very much like a website, but they tend to be more dynamic because we're changing, whereas the website seems to be more fixed and more static. Um, I would love to, at some point, be able to do a vlog, which is a video blog, similar to, it's a, a, a blog where we have us doing this. The only thing that's holding us back really is the equipment and stuff like that. But so when we look at a blog, they tend to have some common features. If you look to the right where it says, what is a blog? They tend to have the main page, the main content. They tend to have a way people can comment in links. These are very useful for general blogs, but also for education. I see. Now, we will take a few minutes to talk about what uh, basic elements of a blog look like. I'm hoping that today when we get a chance to talk about this, we can all be able to at least start something. But let's start off with the basic elements. 
So the first thing we have is the blog header. That's usually the, the first impression that the students get or the, the, the reader gets. You've got your name and your tagline. Then you've got blog pages, which we're gonna talk about. It's where we have additional information that you wanna look at. We're gonna look at blog posts, where it's the most important, the main content comes from. We're gonna look at comments, where the readers can interact with the content that you've put on. And we're gonna talk about some sidebars where we have links to additional content that they might need. The archives, that will all be saved. That's the difference between this and kind of a website is that it saves all the past posts you've put up, right? And students can look back or readers can look back to, to things they might have missed. And then you also have, you're gonna have the footer, which again, this is not so important to be concerned about, but it will have links and contact information that you might want to share. And then we might, we'll talk about blog images. This is great for bringing things to life and bringing color to the content. So we will talk a bit about these today, hopefully. So any questions so far? Silence. <laughs> hopefully we're doing good. Okay, that's, so always, that's always such a strange feeling. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I get it. <laughs> but, but, I, can't, I can't read the faces. So I'm hoping everybody's doing well. Okay. Right. You know, sometimes if people put it in the in the chat, then you kind of know they're paying attention. But otherwise, okay. I get it. It's hard. <laughs> All right, good. So if anybody has any questions or any feedback or wants to make a face so I can like pick up on something, please let me know because all I can see is my screen. Okay. So as I mentioned, the blog header, what is this? In this case, mine is called, this is called learning English, right? I tried to keep it as simple as possible for my students. If I was to have a different kind of blog, I might come up with a catchy phrase, but in this case, we're calling it learning English, right? And you also have blog pages as I mentioned. If you look at this one on the right, my blog pages happen to be called COVID-19 News, Extra English, Our Class, and Words of the Week. Right. And, and just for all those, since I'm in a world of English folks, I do have these capitalized <laughs> in the way that I designed it and formed it. But but the the web building, uh, the blog building website made them just lowercase. So I haven't figured out yet how to out override that, but I will. OK, so our blog post is what you're going to see right here on the left where it says welcome to class class number 21. So that's going to be the main content. And the blog comments are going to come down at the bottom, which we don't see right here. And yep, let's look further. So again, we have the sidebar. You'll hear people say sidebar a lot when you're talking about blogs. That's just the thing on the right. Pretty self-explanatory. Archives, in my case, you can see my design. The archives are up on the top left where you can see Deary and you can go back. So as I mentioned, the beautiful thing about having a blog is all of the content is saved. So if a student missed something, you can send them the link and it's all right there. The footer, again, this is not such a, an important thing starting out, but that's where I put my calendars and the contact me, stuff like that. And again, like I mentioned, images. Um, I will talk about this a little bit. It's something you can explore further in, but it's really not complicated. You, For me, with what I have right now, I use my phone to take a picture of the book or the whatever, and then I send an email to myself. And then once I have that, I just save the picture and I add it. Pretty straightforward. It's a little bit convoluted, but that's what we're doing right now. All right. So now that we understand what a blog is, just basically a diary online, and hopefully there's no more question, no questions, we get to the building phase. This is the fun part. I'm sure that every single teacher is going to have a super creative and interesting. I'd love to see it. I can't wait to see it. So, but, Alyssa, can I ask you something real quick? Yes. Is this is this all part of that Edu blog tool? Well, like here's what I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to get into that actually right now. Okay. So, all right. Cool. So the first thing, yep, the first thing I want to talk about is find a free and reputable blog. 
Now there's a, oh, I messed this up. There's a huge variety <laughs> that there's some pretty trustworthy websites. WordPress is a really reliable one. So is Weebly and Squarespace, Blogger and Wix. All of these are super reliable. All of them vary if as to being free versus if you want to pay. And sometimes if you pay, then you get more options. But they're all really good. And if you decide you want to, those are great avenues to go. But today, for our purpose, thanks, Joan, as we just mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, EduBlogs. For us right now, it's a really great um, platform. It's geared for us. And it's super, like I said, straightforward and basic and not, not complex. So because it's so user friendly, I'm really going to encourage us to probably not this moment, but later on today and going forward, if you want to, to connect with students, you can easily use EduBlogs. And I put down here how you get there. It's pretty straightforward, EduBlogs.org. But so let's begin what this would look like to start. So if you see right here on the page, this is what it will look like when you go to edublogs.org. You can see how it says, get a free blog. That's great. You can sign up. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I'll stop saying that. <laughs> now, this is the, the, the part where we want to make sure and take some notes, maybe. So you want to click on get a free blog, as I mentioned already, or that's up there. You want to come up with a username, keep it recognizable. Nothing too complex, at least for my level of students, and come up with the password. As always, make sure to write it down and keep it somewhere safe because you'll need it. But you guys know this already. That's not nothing new. Okay, now getting into the deeper parts. You will need an email address, no big deal. And you'll need to choose a URL. Now, what is the word URL? It's just the website address, all right? So for mine right here, Deary ESL1, pretty straightforward. Now, you need to maybe be ready to be creative because I've been through this quite a few times with the different blogs that I've written. You might come up with a name that you think is great, but it might have been taken many other times. So you need to think... Um, a couple things, think of creatively and what you can come up with. And then also um, think long-term. Sometimes I've done this in the past. I wrote, for example, this is my class fall 2001, and then it became fall 2002. So it was no longer a useful name. This is something you can't change. So be prepared to pick another one. As I mentioned, many are taken, but I bet you dear ESL2 is not. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> make sure to make it recognizable. As I mentioned, if you are doing it as a personal blog, which I encourage you to do, maybe something like Rhode Island Ramblings or something catchy like that would be great. But for my students, for right now, I think is being as straightforward as possible is, is a great way to go. Okay. Love to hear any, any questions anybody might have. But so once you've signed on, once you've come up with the URL, once you've given them your address, you will get an email confirming the details of your blog. Again, save this because you don't want to lose it. It's just the information. Then you will be linked to your page. And this is where the magic starts. <laughs> when you open that link, you will see what it looks like behind the scenes. And I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. But you will get opened up to this whole new world of what this, this building of blog looks like. All right? So I will take some time for the remainder to, to, look, to explain what that will look like. All right? I would like to once again encourage you not to be overwhelmed because it's just something that you it you don't have to be an expert immediately. It's the more you mess around with it, the more you explore it, the more you learn. It's pretty straightforward. And as I always say, you can always just Google answers like how do I do this? And they usually always have the answers. All right. So here we're seeing what it looks like somewhat on the on the back or the part that you'll be seeing. 
I'm going to talk about a little bit what these things on the left are like, because that's what you're going to see, right? So the first thing you're going to see is my sites. Don't let that confuse you. It's just basically your site. Um, Edublog also has like some information. Your dashboard, which is all of this stuff right here and all the stuff across the top. It's like your homepage. My class, that's really what you want to worry about. And the posts, that's the important part. So you're going to be doing most of your interaction, the basic building, you're going to start there. Posts, which I have highlighted right there. You are going to have all your posts from the past, which you can see as well. Adding new, which is what you're going to use every day. And then the pages down here. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but down here under links, pages, those are those, those extras that I was talking about. Those are pretty straightforward. That's the content you don't change as much, but you want the students to, to see. And most importantly, to begin, when you start, you want to begin to build the appearance of your blog. This is the fun part. They give you a lot of varieties, a lot of choices of what you can choose, and then you can personalize it yourself. Now, one of the things I want to emphasize that I made sure to really look into as I was building this one is to make sure that your blog is user-friendly, uh, mobile-friendly, I mean. Some of them have so much content and they're so busy and there's so much to download that they, they, will, they will have problems with the students who are downloading it onto their phone. So when choosing one, try to keep it as simple as possible. As much as I'd like to make it look flashy and colorful, I try to just tone it down so it's not hard for them to, to download and connect with their limited data. So this is what it means. This is that part right here, an example of what it means when you choose your appearance or your theme. These are all different uh, options you can choose. Different. So if, if you decide like, oh, so I like this one down here on the right, you can click theme details, which will give you an idea of what it looks like, live preview, which will, if you have content on there, will show you what it looks like and activate, oops, which means I choose that. So, okay. you look, go ahead. Is there a question? I I heard a question? Again, like I said, if you look across the top up here, it says there's 374 free uh, themes or appearances. If you go to the mobile friendly one, that's the one I would encourage for our purposes right now. But as you like, whatever is best. Okay. Um, Alyssa, I was just going to ask a quick one that someone had put in here about yes. embedding, embedding videos or, um, or, um, you know, or sharing any links. Can you do that in a blog? Yes, you definitely can. And, and I, I didn't go into, I'm not going to go into it at this time, just because that's a little bit, uh, yep. a little bit more knowledge. Sure. It's pretty straightforward, but like it, all this stuff right here on the left, if you just explore it, and like I said, just Google it, Matthew, the guy who does IT for us, him and I both agree that when it comes to stuff like this, as much as you Google, you can find the answers to it. So sometimes the trick is just knowing the question to ask when Googling. Yeah. But yeah, if okay. you see right here where it says media, you can definitely put in media and um, all of that stuff, like we just said. Awesome, it's really thank not, you. Yeah, it's really not that complicated. It's good to, it's good to know. Okay. So, <laughs> so the posts are where we put the main content right here on the left. Again, you're going to see. So all my posts that I've done so far up till this week are, are right here, right? So I can go to each of the time I've put up the content and, and I can go and, and change it or whatever I want to do. So this is where, for me, this is where I put the classwork each day. Now I'm gonna I can I'm gonna talk a little bit later about it, but I'm using both um, WhatsApp and the blog because the blog is is the students can go to it, whereas WhatsApp, when people add their messages, the things get lost, and so this is a good place. I just can keep directing them back to come to here. So each day I go to create a new blog. So I go to add new over here in the corner, and. Mm -hmm. 
a, a trick that I do that I'm going to share right now is so if we go to add new, one of the ways I make sure to just uh, make it easier is I go to my previous post and I control, I highlight all of it and I control C and then go to the new one and control V and paste all the content. There's more than one way that you can copy the content from the last blog, to the, the last post to the new post. Again, if you ask, look around, you'll find out how to do that. But control C, control V is just a good way to keep recycling the format and stuff like that. All right, so as you can see with mine right here, I, I tried to keep mine for, for just for the purposes of this learning right now with my basic students, I'm just keeping it as consistent as possible. So instead of naming it today, we're going to do this, just keeping it, this is class number. And as today is our, was our 22nd class, so keeping track of that. All right. <clears throat> So you will see something like this. This is what it will look like when you are beginning to, to add your content, right? So we have add a new post, and then this is where we're gonna type our, our, our information down here. And what you're gonna wanna know is once you have it, that your content in here typed in, you're gonna wanna save draft. Believe me, there's so many times where I put the content in, and I didn't save it, and it was, well, I did it again. Um, you can always preview it, see how it will look, and you can publish it. So these are all publishes what when it goes live. So all of this stuff right here, this is just behind the scenes. This is backdoor, as they call it. This is not live yet until you publish it. So actually. I'll go up one more time. And if you look up here in the left-hand side, it says to add a picture, click on add media. Again, like I love how straightforward this is because all you need to do is add media and that will again, allow you to add all those things we were talking about like pictures and, and videos. So this is what it looks like when I've written a bit, when I have put some content in my writing part. And so once I've put it all in there, I'm going to press view post and then I will see what my what my blog looks like, right? I always encourage you to check it over before going through it with your students. <laughs> At least from my personal experience. So, this is what it will look like now I went live, right? So this was the this was behind the scenes and this is what it looks like live. And because this one is mine, you can see the black across the top, the students won't really have that. But Again, this is all the stuff we just talked about. We got the title and the and the menu, uh, the pages, and then the content. Good. So far, so good. <laughs> if anyone I'm has sure. a if anyone has a question, feel, you know, either unmute and ask, or put it in the blog, and I'll or the blog. Sorry, <laughs> the chat. <laughs> different thing. And you I will take, take a look too. at it. You can tell me to slow down too. You can tell me if I'm going too fast. Um, I see great. <laughs> you got a comment. That's it. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Thanks. So, so really become, you'll see, we want to become familiar again with this black line, because this is again your work. But but as I as I was trying to I'm trying to say, I'm trying to share with it's it's I'm sure we can all do it. I'm sure it doesn't have to look flashy. It can if you want, but this is um it's pretty fun. So so we talked about what a blog is. We talked about basic ways to start one. And now I'm gonna talk about what it's like for COVID-19. And I'm sure you guys have a ton more ideas than I could come up with right now. But they are basically the world is our oyster when it comes to this because we can use it anywhere from the very beginning to the super advanced in my opinion. I'm actually, the advanced students, advanced levels, it's super great. When I taught at University of Rhode Island, I was having my students um, make blogs themselves, which I'm sure many of you probably have experience with too. Then you can, with the students, engage in a lot, very deep learning or very robust learning. So, but for my level, even at the very beginning, I'm glad that they can have this blog because it's they can navigate it and, and it's new content every day. 
for with my low level, I have a couple of goals, right? That I, the reason why I felt it was very important. First of all, it's a place where my students can get the, the information that they need that might get missed on WhatsApp because that's where we, our level really of interacting. Like all this COVID news, which my students from like 10 different languages might have no connection with. I'm trying to put that all up in that menu called COVID news. So just this week, we got the information about the SNAP and stuff like that, the changes to that. I put in there where they can get tested. I put in there and I try to put it as much translated into their language as well, which is super, super easy if you just use Google Translate with most languages and just copy and paste it. Okay. Another reason why I like to use this is because a lot of students can't be there, at least for my level, can't be there at that exact time because their kids are using the internet or their kids are using their time and, and stuff like that. So a lot of my students will go back at night when everybody has gone to sleep and they will have an, a place to access the information. So that's good. So, and as I mentioned, it makes them just aware of what they're doing. It's also been kind of frustrating. Uh, don't have it. It's also been kind of frustrating for our purposes because for the lower levels, we use so many different books and so many different worksheets and stuff like that. And students like to have hands on stuff. And so I can take pictures of that and put it on the blog and they can use it, which is better. Okay. So what I did right here, when he found out the snap stuff, I put that right there. So those are the things I'm talking about over here. They they are extra stuff that we might need to know. So I have right here COVID-19 news, as I mentioned. I try and make it in their language. I have extra areas, the, the websites that they can practice English, stuff like that. I have, again, the SNAP update that we just got this week, and we do a quiz every week at the end of the end of the week. So I put words up there for them to study. So, um, <laughs> I, got, I, I, got, I got really frustrated trying to make sure these were um, capitalized, but again, it's just something I have to explore and figure out how I can override the formatting. It's not, not that hard if I figure it out. Okay. so. Again, with my students, this is where I leave the content and the main part. I leave the content here, and then I take a picture and sometimes place it on WhatsApp or tell them to come here. So sometimes the stuff will get lost on WhatsApp so they know they can come here. Hi, uh, Lisa, this is Sherry Lahane. Can I ask a question? Yes. Oh. Um, so you're using both WhatsApp and EduBlog simultaneously, right? Um, Correct, yep. So if I understood correctly, it's like things get lost in WhatsApp, which is what I'm hearing from a lot of teachers because it, it yep. just gets kind of so overloaded. Um, so yep. this is kind of the alternative to keeping things organized and you can create like the blogs by uh, having a header where they can easily go back and find that particular information, et cetera. Is that right? Yep. So they're kind of yep. going both places. Yep, exactly. So what ends up happening is, is that you'll put the content in WhatsApp and then everybody writes back and forth and then it gets lost and they missed it from the very beginning. Right. But I, I constantly, every day, I'll just put, so this is the link from today. This is what the content is. And I'll put just the dearyesl1.edublogs.org and all they have to do is tap on it in WhatsApp and then it's consistent and it's not getting lost. And then I can just refresh it every day and they can um, they can just see it. So yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And yep. is it stream? Are blogs um, streamed? No, because it's not live content. Okay. So, so it is more dynamic than a website because a uh -huh. website, when you build it, you want it just to be more, more, just the same. Yeah. So it's not streaming. If you want to, like I said, was asked, you can figure out how to put like your content on it in the video format or something like that. Yeah. But uh, it's it's just consistent until you change it. The, yeah. the part that that would change with the comments and the stuff like that, which I'll mention in a minute. But okay. I see that it's um, powered by WordPress. I I never, if anybody on this call knows what WordPress is, you probably do, Alyssa, as a as a website. Um, I just realized right now that it's the plugin blog 
for WordPress. Yes, it is. So is WordPress is one that I've always used. Any blog I've ever made, or when I've worked on websites, building, um, WordPress is like the go-to. So the fact actually that EduBlogs is run by WordPress is a really, really good uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> because they're because they're very experienced in this and they're not new to the to the whole thing. And they really, I think, want to make it as easy as possible. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. Our um R I Adult Ed website is built in WordPress. See, it's and it's very user friendly in my opinion. You can make it deeper if you want, but it, it can be just the average person like me just trying to putz around and figure stuff out. So yeah, this content is what I'll put each day. Like I'll give my students the the verb of the day and and stuff like that. Um, next, I I have as I mentioned before comments. And this is where it gets a little bit more complex. I love for my students, they're I almost they're almost there, <laughs> to, to take some of the work we learn and to write it down on the comments page. If they were a little bit higher, I think they would be able to. But so having them leave a reply, and at times what I've been doing is having them tell me, like build, make a sentence with that verb, and then they'll tell me and I'll type it. And I'm teaching them as we go along how to do that. Um, so what you'll want to do as you go forward you, is you're going to, I'll show in a minute, you want to modify these comments, or I think that's what it's called, moderate, moderate these comments, because there are times when places and people who do not belong to the whole scenario will start adding their stuff. And so I make sure to approve my comments before they're published, which is a pretty straightforward thing too. So again, this is the dashboard. This is what you'll see. This is where all the, the where you edit and you change the content. So here you'll see my posts, my pages, and the comments. That's like my main spot. Now, this is where, again, this is where it becomes very dynamic. This is the part that really helped, again, from, from my level and for all levels, adding media. Media is just like the pictures in the video like we were talking about. It's it's, it's easy as going to that, that thing up there on the top left. And then this is where it gets a little bit more. You want to make sure you have the pictures or the content uploaded onto a place, like your documents somewhere, and then just upload those files from and put them in the media library. And that's what mine look like. Oh, so I can say... Hi, Alyssa, I was just going to ask a comment someone has put yep. in the chat. Um, is there a way to track when students have, have accessed the blog so you can see how much time they've spent on a lesson, things like that? You, I think you can see if, if they comment, yes. And I think there's 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 ways that you can, well, okay, there, there's a way. So if you really want to get more complex than this basic, which I'm showing you right now, you can moderate who even comes in and, and when they come in and you will be able, you can see it, yes. At the basic level, you can't really see how much time each person is spending on it. But if you want to make it so each student has to go to and you want to be able to see, the best way I guess is to have them comment. But I'm sure, again, if you look into it, you can find some way, oh yeah. In previous blogs, there's like a, a thing that tells you how many people have visited the site. That's one thing, but that won't tell you specifically. So yes, there are, I'm sure ways. <laughs> it just takes a little bit looking into to see how, how, how that would work best for you. But there's a couple different ways you can look into, into finding it out. You, Great, you thank you. <laughs> yeah. <Thanks. laughs> I'm trying to think of, th there's definitely ways. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, Yep. So, so the next, so we're, we're adding some media. So you're finding the add media. Um, you're going to click to upload the files. And so then I have, so I'm going to, I have that picture like as my inserting into my post and then I will see it on my post. Right. And then it will come. That's what it will look like. All right. I hope I'm not throwing too much information at, at one time, but I'll try and go a little bit faster so we don't have time for questions. Okay. 
So the settings, this is kind of the part where you really want to get to know as well. And this is kind of what I was talking about as far as um, this is where you will navigate who can do what with your, with your blog. You will moderate the comments, as I was mentioning before. Some will post, and you can make sure you double check that post before you allow it to be seen by the rest. This I consider a very important step because, as I mentioned before, there's people are out there who are trying to get onto your page and and put things you don't want to see. So, but this is just a, a really good area to become familiar with. All right, these are the comments as I was mentioning. This is kind of again. So you see who's making the comments, and you can enable who puts them up and 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 who's allowed to and not allowed to. And you can see, again, this is all these on the right. Anyone post a comment, hold for moderation. All just things you want to looking at before you allow the comments to go in. So this is kind of what, what it will look like. And again, the front, like I was saying. Ah, wait, did I do that right? I don't know if I have. All right. Well, I guess that's um, this lady. This this um, she's a YouTube, and she's super super helpful. She's she's got a whole YouTube on getting started with Edu Blogs. And do I have the address of that? Getting just YouTube getting started with Edu Blogs. She's got this fifteen minute thing, and she really helps you out with step by step. Um. And I think that's a lot of the information that I have. So, oh, I'll leave it there. Sorry. No, I was, go I was going to um, go back to your chat for a second. So, let's see. There's a couple. Of, there's a couple of things in here. Um, one of which is I know that Keisha just posted. If anyone didn't register to go back to the calendar later and do that, and we'll also be sending you evaluation, which is really important. And she's logging off, which is why she's adding that in now. So I appreciate that, thanks. Um, she works a shorter day. Uh, but someone had added in a question, um, can students and teachers send messages privately on EduBlog? Yes, yeah, so again, that goes to, it goes to, again, how much you want to manipulate this, this part on the left. This black part on the left is really your friend. And the more you get to know it, the more you can. So in the past, when I, when I was teaching at other places, I made it so only my students could see the blog and only my students could, could comment on the blog. Now, in my opinion, that's more ideal. But they were, they were collegiate level students, and so they could understand how to navigate that. I think my ESL one students, just getting them on the blog is a good thing. But if you are somewhere in between those two, then definitely you can navigate it. And again, that will be right here on this left-hand side where you comment and also who can see the blog, period. So again, just, just YouTube, when I'm writing, when I'm starting a blog, who can see it, who cannot see it. And as was mentioned before, WordPress is a really great format for a uh, platform to use it through. So they have a lot of help. Any more questions? <laughs> if I could figure out how to show you what mine looks like live, <laughs> that was the thought. I was going to. I was going to. I also put down here some of the um, places where I got a lot of the information. But like I said, just explore. If you walk away with anything today, just know that you can definitely do it. And just asking the questions in YouTube, um, if you have specifics, EduBlog has a lot of stuff set up to help you with this or through this. And even the lowest of students with enough help are being able to navigate it. So that's good. Should I ask any? Should I stop? <laughs> Let me see. Uh-oh. Am I still there? Right. You are no, you are still there. But basically when you just so people who if you've ever presented on this, uh when you share, you're actually a, two people on here. So just so you know. But if others have questions, I don't want to be the one giving all the questions out here. So if you have a question, please share. Or now please I can ask. see. 
<laughs> what, what do you do you feel like you can do it now? Hi, Alyssa. This hi. Is, this is Nazneen, Alyssa. Oh, hi, Nazneen. Oh, what a nice job of creatively using distance learning. Very nice. Thank you very much for sharing this, Alyssa. Great job. Thank you, Nazneen. I appreciate it so much. You are welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing comments that say that it's um, it's it sounds like a great resource. Um, Alyssa, this is Sherry again. Um, are you also? You might have said this, so I apologize if you did. Are you also sharing um, learning res like links to? Yes. Yeah. All kinds of yeah. Things. That was one of the things I had on the side menu bars. Um, yeah. Again, it's a lot of. I took. I take some time to explain to my students that you can click on this. I but, yeah. but because I can do it live, I can show them. Click on this, and that's where I have things like talk, learning chocolate and things like that, so they can go to do more. Okay, um, so for your class or classes, are you primarily using EduBlog and WhatsApp, or are you? using something else in addition? Are you I'm using, using both of those as a way to communicate. Okay. Um, but uh, while at the same time doing the, the Microsoft Teams. And so. Excellent. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. but, but really for my level students with the limited capacity they have as far as um, downloading and internet and stuff like that, these t seem to be the more reliable ways to connect with them, right? Because mm -hmm. most of my students can't get on Microsoft Teams and stuff like that. Many Got of them. It. Yeah. But okay, great. Okay. I'm putting together something as an example of communicating with students. Can I use you as an example in that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. Thank this you. Was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, it. Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? We have a few minutes. Now's your opportunity to get those detailed questions answered. If there's anything you can run and walk away with is that if, if you look, you to, uh, Google always has answers if you just if you just ask. Sometimes it's knowing how to ask, but but it's it's super doable. I'm sure of it. And it it didn't take me many many hours either. You know what? That's always the thing I I get asked when about about you know new things that teachers are doing. How much time do you spend putting this all together? Yeah, it's 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 really once you get into the maybe the initial part will take a little bit of a learning, but we have time. So, <laughs> but once you get into the groove of it, it's very straightforward in my opinion. So, okay, very helpful. Yeah, yep. I think it shortens things for me actually. I'm I'm yeah. curious if anyone else has tried using a blog and what yeah, how, how this compares and that kind of thing. Is anyone yeah, else it. willing to share? That'd be interesting. Anybody? <laughs> I can't be the only one. I think Ed DeRozier must have somebody who was on here maybe used one. Possibly. He may have just signed out because I can hear, I can see that he wrote thank you and, and great oh, job. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm glad if that's the case, then I'm glad that we talked about it. <laughs> I'm glad that we're going to try. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yay. Actually, Alyssa, I'm still here. Oh. Um, so, uh, I've used similar things. Now, I haven't done a blog with my class specifically. Okay. Um, I've used things like Padlet and mm -hmm. um, you know Google Classroom and things like that. Yep. Which is similar. Yeah. The thing I like about this is it's it's pretty straightforward and pretty basic, so it can reach the the even lower. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for your level, that is needed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, the, the nice thing about the blog too is you can put it right in Google Translate too. Mm -hmm. too. Yep. So. Which I have done a lot these days. <laughs> yep. Yep, it's true. Yep, yep, yep. Kamal, I have to imagine that you used one as well, but maybe not. Yeah, no. No, thank you, Marissa. Thanks. Sorry. Oh. 
Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yay! I I can see it. I can see using it with my students. Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. I have to teach them how because we use Zoom and it wasn't that great. Mm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping it as simple as possible is really helpful for, for yeah. this level. But yeah. yeah. My students are most of them beginners, you know. Mm -hmm. This would help them a lot. Thank you yep. so much. Yay. I'm so glad. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Great job. Great job. Thank you, thank you. Uh, how can I see the recording, the recording of this video? That's uh, so basically what will happen is I will end up posting it in the weekly um, announcements that I put out. And then it may end up also on the uh, Delta Ed website. Um, I have to talk to Sherry about how to get that on there because I can't do that. But um, I think we're going to try to put all of the recordings from all of the different teacher, uh, you know, series webinars on there so but it will d look at the weekly we send out our weekly thing on fridays and so i should have potentially have it in there tomorrow tomorrow Great. is actually friday <laughs> <laughs> just saying also i'm more than happy if anybody wants to send a question to my email address which maybe is somewhere i'm more than happy to answer questions if, if i can um to help out i'm more than happy to thank you yep <laughs> Yay. I still see a few people on the call. Anybody, any other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> I just, I want to thank you, uh, Elisa, for, for all the presentation. And after this presentation, I, I'm going to think of using the blog uh, with my class, with my Genesis Center, the uh, level class, and even at Dorcas also. Why not? Yeah, uh, why not, it's good right? good and useful. Yeah. Yep. Just another yeah, thing in the toolbox. Yep, yep, that's right. Awesome. Oh, look, faces are coming up now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that. That happens when you're not sharing the screen sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't have I don't have a question or anything about that, but I did want to tell you that um, we start we use Meet a lot for our for our school, and. Um, I wanted to let you know that there's an add-on that you can do that can collect attendance. So um, I forget what it's called, but I just started using it like yesterday. So just being aware that that's there, so um, so you don't have to write everything down. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Carrie. Now that you mentioned that, that is a plugin that I didn't. Again, I didn't really get into so much of the plugins because that's a little bit deeper of a familiarity. But a plugin, there's one you can put for whoever asked about see who's seeing it. There's a plugin for attendance on the blog, I think, if I remember. Uh -huh. But yeah, some of them, I think the, the problem that I came across when I was looking at is if you have to have like the paid version to get some of the, the, the added things, some of the added parts. If, oh, if you're, you, I don't right, know if, if you're using this yet, site but... though, if you, I'm sorry, I was gonna say, if you're using uh, Red Island Adult, uh, yeah, Red Island Adult Ed, you, that is a paid, so you should definitely be able to get all the add-ins. Okay. I, I don't know because I was I had to take a phone call in between, right? So I was listening, but I had to I was multitasking like we're all doing. And I don't know um, if you mentioned the Google Sites, which is because we're using the Risky account because all of us can use that. That's um, free, and we get some extra bonuses because it's a paid for yep. site from the state. So uh, I like to use the Google Sites because it's. Um, it's just very quick. I don't have to worry about it. It's for school. I'm not trying to make anything fancy. Mm -hmm. And then later, if there is an opportunity to have the students build their own site, I mean, that's a dream, of course, but they don't know that yeah. it's a reality at this moment. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my thought. Yep, exactly. Because yeah, I, I work with, like, a, with, for Pawtucket, I work with uh, ESL. Um, and then for Westby, I work with GED, and the GED probably, they're, they're kind of like moving along, so I don't know if I would work for them anyway. But mm -hmm. the idea would be to get the ESL people to do it so they, have, so they know the language and using it. They already know, probably know how to do it, but you'll know how to do it in English. Yep. So it's one of those things. Yep. There could be a whole course made out of it just for my students, even oh. the low level. I'm sure you could teach them. It's, mm -hmm. it's doable. Just a matter it's of doable. It's just a lot of time. Yeah, it's a lot of setup time. So it's a matter of like, yeah, it's doable, but maybe not doable this year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, something something to be said for uh, 
how long will we be doing this? And should we think long term exactly. about, uh, you know, how can you use this even when you're back and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing? I, yeah. I do think that just, just as a like conversation element about this, I do think that we are, when we go back, we are going to have to reuse a lot of these tools. And I think it's a good idea to start investing the time in mm -hmm. making them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good for us to kind of get into the habit of it anyway. Yep. And I think for me so far, I'm already projecting and okay, like what if we did some kind of a blend thing? Even if we don't do a blend thing, and I have my belt, even if it doesn't work that way, then I still know how to do it. So mm -hmm. it's all fine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the students who are out sick, like I know with our with our organization, students will become sick and they can't and they can still do this from home if they start to feel better, type of thing. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. And we found, we honestly have found like a lot of times um, now that we're having our, our classes, we have like a meetup time, but we meet up every day. A lot of students um, don't have any trouble coming or finding some better attendance in some ways, like mm -hmm. not in all ways, but in some ways, right? Because it's meeting them, on, like, you know, maybe a student wanted to come if they had a doctor's appointment or they have a lot of things set up because they have kids or they have to pick up their kids or something's going on in their world. But they can't necessarily drop into a physical school. Well, having this available, like they can come on their phone and they can even just be listening while they're driving, even if they're not interacting with the video. Yeah. So having that's been very helpful. And I think it's something we're gonna bring back to our um our establishment when we come back to whatever it is that we're coming back to. Hmm. We're gonna continue doing these online meetings. So it's been very beneficial for a lot of our students. Yep, for sure. Okay, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to meet you. It's nice to talk to you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Nice to see live people, right? <laughs> yes, as an introvert, this has been a really tough process for me. I mean, an extrovert. An ex I'm an extrovert with surrounded by introverts. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Well, thank you. You know, I really appreciate that you did this today. I know. You know, for so many people too, unless you feel like you're an absolute expert at doing something, mm -hmm. you're you're hesitant to share. But I think it's really important to share, and I think it's always great to see new ideas and or maybe something you thought about or you just real or you just think, wow, I should be, you know, or could be or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. but thank you, I appreciate you know all that you did today. It's great. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You. I was so good to see all you guys, and I'm so happy. And like I said, if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to help. Yay. Sounds great. Sounds yeah, great. Well, I hopefully we'll see you all on the other side, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's hope we see each other there sooner rather than later. <laughs> all, so. right. all right. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you. another Bye. session next Tuesday. Different person. Another one next Thursday. Again, different person. So thank you. Hopefully, I'll see you all again. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.